Welcome back to Cloud 42, I'm James. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes and show you how we manufacture our hobbed bolts. Um, this is a hobbed bolt, in case you're not familiar with 3D printers, it's just an ordinary bolt that has teeth cut in the side of it. And what's that for? It's for the drive system of a fused filament 3D printer. So for those of you who are not familiar with 3D printers, let me give you a little quick intro. Um, the kind of, there's lots of different kinds of 3D printers, and there's lots of different kinds of technologies. But the technology that's most commonly used in hobby grade printers, um, any of the RepRap printers, things like uh, MakerBot and any of the clones, is a technology called, it's called several things. Sometimes it's called FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling. Sometimes it's called FFF, fused filament fabrication. And which one you call it just kind of depends on who you are and who won which trademark court case which week. But the idea is you start with filament. This is 1.75 millimeter filament. It also commonly comes in three millimeter. This is uh, ABS. And so it's just plastic in a very precisely extruded strand. And these come in rolls of, um, this is old, so it's brittle, uh, come in rolls of a kilogram or so. And so the way this works, the printer feeds the plastic in, melts it, and squirts it out in layers to build up the parts. And so the hobbed bolt has these teeth, and they engage the filament, and as the bolt turns, it drives the filament into and out of the extruder. So here's an example. As an example, this is a 3D printer extruder. This is one of our designs here at Cloud42. This is a double extruder. And the way this works is we've got filament coming in the top. In this case, it's a double extruder, so there's two filaments. There's a little scrap of white and a little scrap of black. Because this isn't in a printer right now, they're just trimmed off and the stubs are sitting there. I would pull them out, but the plastic has solidified down in the printer, so it has to be heated before you can pull it out. So essentially what happens is you have these two pieces of filament and they're driven down through the heat break into this block. And there's two of them, one for each filament. And this is an aluminum block with a nozzle on the bottom. And this is heated to a temperature above the melting point of the plastic. So as the filament is forced in here, it melts and comes out this nozzle and builds up in layers to make 3D printed parts. Um, what kind of parts? Well, this whole extruder is made of 3D printed parts. The gear's a printed part, the frame is a printed part. This is another frame, and this is just built on a sheet of glass by squirting out plastic and building it up in three-dimensional layers as it goes. Now you can see in this, there are two hobbed bolts, one for each filament. There's one here, driven by this pulley, and you can just see the head of the second one, which is driven by a pulley on the other side, driven by uh, another motor. And so these bolts sit inside and have teeth on the side that engage the filament and force it down in. So how do you make a hobbed bolt? Well, in the hobby world, when RepRap started out, the most common method for making a hobbed bolt was with a tap. And you would just arrange the bolt in some kind of fixture so it could freely spin, put a tap against the side of it and spin it. And the bolt would rotate and the tap would cut grooves around the bolt. Now, this is, it's very difficult to get good, uh, to get good teeth, good clean teeth this way. Um, really, if you want them straight so it doesn't twist the filament, you have to have the tap at an angle. Don't know which angle, I can't remember. You have to have the tap at an angle so that the teeth are cut straight. Plus, the diameter of the bolt is changing as it cuts, so the circumference is changing, so the way the teeth line up and overlap uh, changes. So there are combinations that can get decent teeth, but they're never going to be as clean as you can get by CNC milling. So that's the way we produce uh, our hobbed bolts. I just use an eighth inch carbide end mill. This is a four flute US made uh, end mill. Chinese works, but the US made ones actually last longer, especially with the high performance coating that's on this one. And so there's a couple of processes. We've got to go around the bolt and cut out a groove by cutting into the side, spinning the bolt, and moving this back and forth, and then come back and index the bolt 20 times, and come in and cut the 20 teeth around the circumference. 
So how do we do that? Well, there's lots of ways to do that. You could have a, um, an indexing head with a collet closer. There, there's lots of equipment to be able to do this with a fourth axis in a CNC mill. But we just built, uh, built a fixture to do it. This is the fixture. And essentially all this is, is a stepper motor with a belt that drives a 36 tooth pulley. This is a GT2 belt. And then this pulley has been modified. It's been threaded to accept the bolt so that the bolt goes through a support bearing on the end here, threads into the pulley, and then is locked in place with a couple of set screws. So then as the motor turns, this pulley turns and it rotates the bolt in the fixture. And the notch here in the fixture gives us full access to get in with the end mill and cut the waste around, the, the reduced diameter waste around the bolt and then to come back in and peck at it as the bolt is indexed around 20 times to make the teeth. And then this whole fixture just fits in the mill. The mill vise just grabs this, drop it in, hook up the motor, and then we can CNC mill the bolt using the three axis CNC for the mill and then the fourth axis with this motor to index the bolt around. Let's go set it up in the mill and cut some bolts. Okay, let me put a bolt in the fixture and let's run it. And yes, I am wearing gloves. You spend an afternoon running bolts in and out of a fixture like this with your bare hands and uh, you'll start wearing gloves too. Okay, that's in and anchored. Start the mill and cut it. Here's some bolts that we've run. Every one of these has to be cleaned. They have to be immaculate uh, because these are going to be used to drive filament through a 3D printer and any kind of metal shavings or little particles or anything that's still caught in the teeth can get embedded in the filament and then driven down to the melt chamber and through the nozzle. And the problem is the nozzle is very, very small, maybe four tenths of a millimeter, and a single chip getting in there will clog it and cause severe problems trying to print. And they're very difficult to clean because there's molten plastic in them and then when it cools it hardens and it's hard to get out. Generally you have to replace the nozzle when that happens. So to clean these, a little bit of compressed air blows off the coolant. Now the bolt's dry and it's probably fine, but there could be some particles down in the teeth. So I use a, a brush that's been trimmed off so the bristles are very short and stiff and just go through every single one of these and clean out the teeth just to make sure there's absolutely nothing in it. And we do this for every single hob bolt that we make. Again, because the consequences of getting a chip down into a nozzle are just, we don't want to do that. I know the features on these bolts are really small and very difficult to see. This is about as far as I can zoom in with this particular camera. Let's, um, let's go over to the microscope and take a look at the teeth up close so you can see exactly what's going on here. Well, this is one of the hob bolts that we just made a few minutes ago. And you can see the 20 teeth that are indexed and milled in around the sides. And the other thing that you can see is that uh, the edges of the groove are smooth and you can probably see there's some facets on the top, like you can see one right there, and there's another match set on the other side. 
And what's going on there is, you know, the tooth was cut, but first we cut this notch around the kind of a waist around the, the bolt. And what that does is it provides relief out on the edges. Because if we just cut these teeth in, it would be jagged along the edge here instead of smooth, and the filament would catch on that and would kind of grind on the edge of the filament. And during a lot of printing operations, it goes back and forth, pushing filament in, retracting the filament back out. And that can just re lead to a lot of powdered filament that ends up kind of clogging up the mechanism. Uh, just for comparison, this is a hobbed bolt that I bought um, several years ago. And this, you can see, they, don't, they didn't perform that operation on it. And so you've got these sort of jagged edges, and those do just sort of tear up the filament, and you end up with a lot of powder floating around in the printer. You can see that carbide does a beautiful job. It's very, very sharp, and it stays sharp a long time. I can do easily 100 bolts on uh, one end mill, and, and, and after that, I don't, even, I don't even see the wear unless you get under the microscope. You can just barely see, see the wear starting, so carbide's good stuff. That's it for today. This was just a quick little peek behind the scenes of some of the things that we do here on a daily basis. Uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. Comment down below, ask any questions, uh, make suggestions for future videos. Whatever you'd like to put in the comments is great. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss future videos. Thank you for watching.